this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do this paper magazine scrapbook effect for your next video. Yeah, you gonna say something. You gonna try to play with my guy like it's nothing. So first off, coming into our timeline here, to get that paper slow shutter static effect, first we're just gonna start off by making a split and our clip. And then we're just gonna open up our ultimate texture bundle. And then I'm gonna go to the printer paper overlays. As you can see, there's gonna be a lot of overlays that we can choose from. And the great thing about these overlays is that they're different frame rates. So we got 24 here, high res clean eight FPS here. We even have five FPS and they're all different uh, qualities. Some are low res, some are medium res. Um, the one that I'm gonna pick is gonna be the medium res 5 FPS. So all we have to do is just drag it on top of our clip in our timeline. And now all you have to do in your effect controls tab is change the blend mode to screen. And you can see, just by adding that, we already have the paper overlay onto our clip. But to get our clip to match the frame rate is we're gonna go to our effects tab and search up posterize time. And we're gonna drag it on top of our actual clip. Then our effect controls, we can see we could change the frame rate to match the FPS of our overlay, which is five. And you can see when we play it back, we got this nice staticky look on our clip. And to toss that up even more, in our project tab, I'm gonna go to the new item and select adjustment layer. And then I'm just gonna drag an adjustment layer in between our clip here. And I'm gonna go back to effects. I'm gonna search up contrast. Brightness and contrast, gonna drag and drop the brightness and contrast effect onto our adjustment layer. And you can see in the middle of my frame, I'm just gonna make sure to add a keyframe, crank up our brightness and our contrast. So we have that flash. At the start, I'm gonna reset it. And then at the end, I'm gonna reset it um, as well. So when we go over our clip, it's gonna add that flash and then it's gonna fade itself out. And you can see we have this nice little flash transition on our clip. Now to get the cutout paper rips, all you're gonna wanna do is take screenshots of your video or if you have photos from the set or whenever you shot your video, you can use that as well. So in this case for this video, we took actual pictures. You can do either or, but for this case, I have actual pictures, so we're just gonna use those. And for this part, we're gonna use Photoshop. I'm gonna go ahead and guide you through it step by step so you don't have to get lost when you're learning. So now I dragged all my photos into Photoshop. So I'm just gonna start off with this one. And again, I'm gonna open up our ultimate texture bundle. If you go into the paper collage pack. So now that we have our photo and our paper rip on Photoshop, I'm gonna make sure our photo is on top of our paper rip. And I'm gonna right click and create a clipping mask. And I'm just gonna change the blend mode to screen. And what that's gonna do, if we move our photo into our paper rip, you can see it's gonna stay within the frame of the edges. So now we have our first photo for our video. And what we can do is just, we're gonna go file and quick export it as a PNG. I'm just gonna name it paper scrapbook. And now we're just gonna repeat the steps for the rest of our images, our paper collage pack, and go to stars. By the way, all the paper textures that I use in this video will be linked below in the description. If you use the code CHIDAS, you'll get $5 off at checkoff and save yourself some money and time. I always use these paper rips in almost every music video that I edit. They're clean, fire, and easy to use. So now I got our star paper rip, and I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna grab my photo layer and drag it on top of our paper rip, create the clipping mask, and change the blend mode to screen. And just like that, it already looks tough. We can scale our image to our liking, and there we have it. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat the process and export them as PNGs and head back to Premiere. And to transition into the next scene is I'm just gonna grab my clip from our next scene, and I'm just gonna grab it one frame out. And I'm gonna take a screenshot of that frame. And if you don't have the screenshot icon, you can just go to plus, and you can drag it onto button editors and then it's gonna be the same thing for the screenshot that we took from our next clip we're gonna grab our paper rip make sure the image is on top of our paper rip create a clipping mask change the blood mode from normal to screen and then we're just gonna export it and then go back into Premiere with it now that we're back into Premiere I imported our paper rips and so now what we're gonna do is just wear drag our image on top and we're just gonna stack them pretty much like a staircase and I'm gonna go four frames over until we add our next one. So one, two, three, four. Add our next image. One, two, three, four. So now that we have all our images in a paper staircase, you can see it already looks great when we play it back. But in order to give it that sauce and that animation, we're just gonna go to our effects tab. I'm gonna search up directional blur. I'm gonna drag it onto our image. 
and we're just gonna go and keyframe it. And we're gonna give it a lot of blur at first and then two frames over, we're gonna undo it. That's just gonna give us like that picture shutter effect onto our photo. I'm gonna add on to that, we're gonna go to our brightness and contrast and drag that onto our effect too. And we're just gonna up the brightness on the image and then two frames over, we're gonna undo it. So it's really gonna give it like that photo effect when it flashes into the timeline, it just makes it feel more animated. And what we can do as well is that we can add a drop shadow to our image to give it more depth. And you can see that little drop shadow outline on our image to give it that like 3D effect. Now the great thing is that we can just copy these settings onto the rest of our clips by hitting copy and then highlighting the rest and hitting paste attributes. Make sure this is all checked and press OK. And you're gonna see it's gonna apply to the rest of our effects. And that already looks fire. And for our last image to get it to transition in, as we're gonna go ahead and go to our effects again, we're gonna search up our transform tool. And you're gonna see it's gonna be in distort, transform. We're gonna drag it onto our image. And then we're gonna go to our effect controls and we're gonna uncheck the use composition shutter angle and we're gonna put our own shutter angle to 360. And what that's gonna do is add motion blur to when we transform our image. So I'm gonna just wait till our image flashes in. So it's clear right there. Once it's clear, I'm gonna add a keyframe to our scale and position. And I'm gonna just scale it up to kind of match where our scene's gonna be at. So that's gonna be our zoom transition. It's basically flashing in with our first few set of keyframes. So you see it's gonna flash in and then it's gonna zoom into our next photo and boom. So I'm just gonna render it out and then you're gonna see when we play it back, we're gonna have that nice transition effect with the paper rips popping up and the first frame of our next scene transitioning into a zoom effect. And you can see that already looks clean right there. And the best way to sauce it up and make this edit more impactful is definitely by adding sound design. And there you have it. If this video helped you out, make sure you drop a like and subscribe for more tutorials where I'll be uploading daily.